نستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله العظيم من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فعليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصب الحق وتواصب الصبر آمين رب العالمين وأوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله وقد أمرنا بالحق وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوى الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد We begin as always by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by declaring his greatness and by declaring that none has the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for him. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final prophet and messenger. We ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him, the prophets and messengers that came before him, his family and companions that served alongside him, and those that follow in his blessed path until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. We ask Allah to accept our Ramadan. We ask Allah to accept our fasting. We ask Allah to accept our Qiyam. We ask Allah to accept our charity. We ask Allah to accept every moment in which we worshiped Him. Forgive us for every moment in which we slipped. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who caught Laylatul Qadr and have its full reward written for them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, as I mentioned a few nights ago, I wanted to dedicate this Eid khutbah just for a few moments to this concept of stop being a baby. And I know that that means certain things to certain people, and it's not what you think it means. What I want you to think about is your spiritual age. Your spiritual age. How old are you spiritually? If you were to talk about spiritual infancy, being a spiritual toddler, being a spiritual teenager, being a spiritual adult, how old are you spiritually? Now the beauty of our religion is that a person can start fresh as we had two people, mashallah, join the tens of people that embraced Islam here. You can start fresh and you can be a spiritual adult on the very first day because your good deeds are preserved and only your sins are wiped away as you become Muslim. But if you're talking about how you grow towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how you take that next step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have a spiritual age. And we always talk about baby steps towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take the baby step. Start doing a little bit more here, a little bit more there. And we approach our religion without that sense of urgency that is necessary. And I want to emphasize here that yes, while the Prophet ﷺ stressed the importance of being gradual and warned us from burnout and from being overzealous, the Prophet ﷺ came with a religion that woke people out of their slumber and that moved them with a sense of urgency to where in two decades they became the best generation that ever walked the face of the earth. How does that even happen? The Hadith Qudsi that I want you to contemplate on with both Allah's reward as well as how we actually find that journey to be one in which we arrive at a destination quicker than anything else that we do in life. The Prophet says in the hadith from Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, يقول الله تبارك وتعالى من جاء بالحسنة فله عشر أمثالها وأزيت The Prophet said that the Lord has said, Allah has said, whoever brings forth one good deed, I will reward him or her with 10 times that good deed وأزيد, or more, up to however much I want. But the minimum that you get is 10. That's outside of Ramadan. What then of these seasons of blessing in which things are multiplied by so much more? And he said, 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, وَمَنْ جَاءَ بِالسَّيِّئَةِ فَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ مِثْلُهَا أَوْ أَخْفِرْ And whoever puts forth a sin, then that sin will only be punished to the extent that it was committed, meaning one sin for one punishment, or I choose to forgive. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us as He loves to forgive. Allahumma ameen. Then He continues, وَمَنْ تَقَرَّبَ مِنِّي شِبْرًا تَقَرَّبْتُ مِنْهُ ذِرَاعًا وَمَنْ تَقَرَّبَ مِنِّي ذِرَاعًا تَقَرَّبْتُ مِنْهُ بَاعًا Whoever comes to me with a hand span, then I go to him with the length of his arm. And whoever comes to me with an arm, I go to him with the length of both of his arms spread out. Meaning the pace that you're moving at Allah, Allah is moving twice as fast towards you as you are moving to him or more. And then he said, وَمَنْ أَتَانِي يَمْشِي أَتَيْتُهُ هَرْوَلَ Whoever comes to me walking, I go to him running. وَمَنْ لَقِيَنِي بِقِرَابِ الْأَرْضِ خَطِيئَةً ثُمَّ لَا يُشْرِكُ بِي شَيْئًا لَقِيتُهُ بِمِثْلِهَا مَغْفِرَةً And he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and whoever comes to me with an earth full of sins, with an earth full of sins, but without associating a partner with me, meaning still bearing witness to my oneness, and that is the beauty of this word of Tawheed, the Shahada, just starting off with that monotheism, the acknowledgement. Whoever comes to me with an earth full of sins, not associating a partner with me, then I will meet them with an earth full of forgiveness equal to that. They will always find forgiveness with me so long as they proceed towards me. Of the beauty of this relationship with Allah that we taste, especially in Ramadan, is that you will not take a step except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you with the destination as well as compensating you and thanking you for the effort itself. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna hadha kana lakum jaza'an wa kana sa'yukum mashkura. That this Jannah, this paradise is a reward for you for all that you used to do and your efforts have surely been thanked because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the steps that you are taking towards Him. Now here's the thing, you can walk away from these verses, you can walk away from these ahadith and you can say, baby steps. Because Allah is going to keep proceeding to me at a pace that is greater than the pace that I'm proceeding towards Him. And it's true, but why treat your religion with such mediocrity? Why go Ramadan after Ramadan and not have any traceable progress in your life that has manifested? Why not have a buildup? Why not have a portfolio that represents that you are moving towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're taking steps of graduation towards a graduation into Ihsan, towards a graduation into a relationship of excellence with your Lord rather than constantly baby step, baby step, baby step. Dear brothers and sisters, once you know the value of the one that you're running towards, you'll run faster. Once you feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming closer to you, you'll want to get closer and closer and closer towards Him. And just like any other pursuit in life, you can't stay in the same place constantly and expect meaningful change. And so I'm calling upon each and every single one of us to stop being a baby, stop being a spiritual baby. At what point do you grow to that next level? How do the Ramadan after Ramadan after Ramadan and Laylatul Qadrs after Laylatul Qadrs after Laylatul Qadrs represent a buildup in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this is where you find in the Quran, Sabiqu ila maghfiratim rabbikum. Rush to the forgiveness of your Lord. Fafirru ila Allah. Flee to your Lord. Badiru bil a'mal as salih as the Prophet sallallahu said, rush to do good deeds. If you know the value of the currency of Allah, which is His paradise, and you know the value of closeness to Him, then nothing could get in the way of you taking bigger steps. So my only call to you, dear brothers and sisters, is don't just think in terms of baby steps, think in terms of significant strides. And especially in a world of urgency, the people of Gaza have always been a people of sacrifice, but now they have added sacrifice to their sacrifice. We also have to grow to where our sacrifices become bigger, our steps become bigger, our strides become longer, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always meet us faster. And I want to end with this. There is an urgency that is in the air. When there is fitna in the air, when there is tribulation in the air, there is a sense of urgency that comes with that recognition. And it's not just that we need to be careful in our complacency in regards to our journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
It's also that we need to escalate our pursuit of a free Palestine, our pursuit of freeing the oppressed people by standing by their side, which means that when we look at the current situation that we are in today, we escalate escalate our protest to where we're looking towards the weapons manufacturers and these corrupt politicians and everyone that is involved in this genocide that is in front of us and we don't take a break from what is in front of us at any point because you know what today of Eid this day of Eid today is a day of happiness it's not a day of heedlessness today is a day of happiness it is not a day of heedlessness Israel could not take one day off from its murderous ways. And we can't look away for a single day. And subhanAllah, the first video that I saw today was from Mukhayyam Nusayrat, a Nusayrat refugee camp, where a family was killed today, where they bombed a refugee camp on the day of Eid. There is a sense of urgency in the air, dear brothers and sisters, and it's important for us to move forward and not keep doing things as usual, not baby steps in our journey to Allah, nor baby steps in the actions that we are taking as we make dua with a sense of urgency towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so I actually want to leave with a call that on April 15th, inshallah ta'ala, I want to lend my voice to those that are calling for a nationwide strike. No spending, no school, no work. We put forth a nationwide strike, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. No business as usual, no Eid as usual, nothing as usual as long as a genocide continues in front of our eyes. Enough baby steps. It's important that we take the next step in regards to our sacrifice, in regards to ourselves and in regards to our brothers and sisters, and we teach our children as well that our next Eid bi'idhnillahi ta'ala will be in a free Masjid al-Aqsa. We have that sense of urgency in our minds, that sense of urgency in our hearts. Dear brothers and sisters, let what is happening around you inspire you to do more inspire you to treat Ramadan differently, Eid differently, and every single day in front of you differently. No more baby steps, significant strides bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the best version of ourselves for ourselves and the best version of ourselves for our brothers and sisters in Palestine and all over the world. ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في فلسطين وفي السودان وفي كل مكان اللهم أصلح أحوال إخواننا المنكوبين في كل مكان اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك وال كاذبين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخواننا من بينهم سالمين ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من دونك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك جامع الناس ليوم لا ريب فيه إن الله لا يخلف الميعاد وصل الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Jazakum Allahu Khairan. May your Eid be blessed, may your Ramadan be accepted, and may every day ahead of you be a day in which you come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.